Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sketching and painting a little cafe in the Netherlands and it will be in real time, so this is quite a long video. But first, I will be answering a few questions some of you have been asking and I wanted to show you some of these sketches which I did in previous videos and as you can see, even though I didn't stretch these papers or tape them at the sides before sketching, they are quite alright. They did not distort a lot and to me it's pretty much, you know, acceptable. I don't mind that little bit of distortion and I don't really um, tape all of my sketches first before I sketch them and, and the paper that I use mostly comes up perfect except for this one here which is uh, a Bao Hong paper and it did distort a little more than I anticipated because it is a new paper to me. So when you look at it from the sides, you can see quite clearly that only the Bao Hong paper is more distorted. And so for that piece of paper, for that kind of paper, I will, um, in the future, I will tape it down and or stretch it first, or I will only use it in a block. So if distortion of watercolor paper is bothering you, you can tape down the sides first and stretch the paper first before you paint and sketch. Or you can use a block of watercolor paper with the sides gummed so it dries flat. Anyway, today I will be using this Winger Newton 25% cotton watercolor paper. It is 300 GSM and it is archival. I also got a lot of questions about where I get my references and this particular one is from Unsplash and I will link that in the description below so you can check it out. It is a really cool little cafe right here. It, it is not called Cafe du Center. I tried to search for it and couldn't find it. It's actually called Wiet de Kunst in Dutch and it's located in Delft in the Netherlands and I really hope I pronounced it correctly. I will be using the Sakura Micron 04 pen and it is waterproof. The ink does not run when you apply watercolor on top. These are Holbein watercolors which I squeezed out of paint tubes into these half pens. And I got a lot of questions about this little milk Plate. It's actually from Daiso and it's just a normal ceramic plate. You can use any plate you like. So now let's start with the color mixing. For this sketch, I will be doing a base layer in watercolor first before doing the outlines with pen. The first color is a mixture of John Brillian number no. 2 vermilion hue and rose matter and I'm trying to create a sort of orangey red. After testing out on paper, I felt that it was too orange, so I added a bit more of the rose matter. This next color is a mixture of ultramarine deep, cobalt green, and light red so I felt like it was too gray and I added a little more of that ultramarine deep I will also be using cobalt green mixed with a little bit of that second mixture This next color is a mixture of sap green from Van Gogh, light red from Holbein, and yellow ochre, which is also from Holbein. Now 
Now I'm using a big mop brush to wet the surface of the paper with clean water first. You want the surface of the paper to be glossy and wet like this before you start painting. Now I'm starting with the red color that we mixed earlier to block in these shapes that I see in the reference photo. So I'm currently blocking in that signboard shape which is a sort of a rectangle and I'm drawing these lines to indicate that those lines on the awning. So if it's the first time that you're seeing this kind of sketching whereby it kind of looks like I'm sketching like a kid even um, you may think that it looks silly but um, to me it is liberating it's um, following my natural instincts to block out shapes that I see in pictures or in real life and the benefit of painting and sketching with watercolor first before you go in with the outlines is that um, it makes you, it forces you to be loose, it forces you to accept that imperfection at the very first step. So if you want it to be better, you have to work more on it and I think it's it's a, a really fun way to do these ink and watercolor sketches as well. Now I am painting in some of those greens and I personally like to exaggerate the greens in my sketches because I think it makes it more lively and this is just a personal preference if you like it to be neat you can also do that it's completely up to you so this kind of loose sketching um, it's really quite personal it's um, everyone who does this same thing will have a different outcome and that is completely okay. You don't have to follow what I do exactly and you can do whatever you like. My main goal of doing these sketches is always to have fun and to mainly it is to sort of escape to a different place. Um, some of these cafes I really wish I could visit every day if i could i would but it's not possible so the way that i um, sort of escape from real life is to do these sketches of these places that i would love to be in and it kind of does transport transport me to those places and i find it really fun So right now you may have noticed that I'm using a different color. It is a burnt sienna, which is kind of a brown color. And you may have noticed as well that the paper has almost completely dried. And now I'm getting a lot of hard edges on the places that have already dried. So the weather here is super duper hot and I have the fan on most of the time so it does dry very fast so if you want to soften edges you can always do that later like what I'm doing right here and if not if you live in a country where the paper dries slowly then yeah you you're lucky <laughs> if not, you can also control the temperature of the room, you can turn on the AC, and things like that. But if the paper starts to dry before you finish, 
it's not a huge deal as well. Don't make a big deal out of it. It's still fine.、Um, no matter how ugly this layer is, just keep on going. And I can't promise the result will be perfect, but if you work on it more, it will start to become better, and you will definitely learn something from this, and your future sketch will be better off. Who knows? Maybe it will turn out great. So the paper has wrinkled up again, as I mentioned before,、um, but the paper will flatten down by itself once it has completely dried. Remember to wait until it's quite dry before you start outlining. That is to prevent the ink from running. If you feel hesitant to draw those few first lines, you can always do a few dots and then、um, connect those dots together, and that will kind of give you a little bit more control and prevent you from drawing these lines、um, too out of proportion. So you can try this technique if you like. This is a real-time video, and I am sketching at a relaxed pace, so you can watch every stroke and sketch along with me. However, real-time also means you have more flexibility too. So if you sketch faster, you can adjust the playback speed, or you can skip to other sections quicker as you like. When you are drawing and painting, it's important to know where the light is coming from, so that you know where the shadows will be and where the highlights will be. And when you're sketching, it's also nice if you can have certain areas on、um, the right side where the light will be stronger.、Um, you, it's nice if you can have the lines a bit broken up more. So that it it gives that、um, illusion that there is light shining on those spots. You don't have to follow exactly the watercolor shapes that you made before. In fact, this. Is the time for you to correct the shapes and positions of each of the elements in this drawing. So, I always say it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to try your best and follow the reference.
One of the great things about using this fine liner, which is a micron pen, is that it dries really quickly. It does not smudge at all, basically, and it just really um, dries like almost instantly. So you don't have to worry about smudging the ink with your hand um, as opposed to like when I use the uh, Lamy Safari with the Noodler's ink, it tends to smudge and the ink does take more time to dry. For this sketch, I decided to leave out the people who are sitting in front of the cafe just to simplify it a little bit. And I also took a few liberties and made the plant on the right side much bigger. And you'll see that um, in the end, it looks a little bit different on that side. but. Um, to me, it's uh, not a big, not a huge issue, not a big thing, unless I am making like a commission for someone, like if I was doing a commission for this cafe, then maybe I would want to get every detail correct. But um, for this, I am just um, drawing inspiration from the original cafe and the, the original photo. So I'm just trying to be as loose and as free as I want and to include any elements that I want and also to exclude anything that I feel um, uncomfortable painting in or sketching in. Now I am drawing the bushes and very obviously they are much bigger than the original photo and they are much more messy and I like the plants that way. It just feels so free and happy. <laughs> so yeah, you can draw it any way you want. I like it like this. It's um, random and messy but it has its own beauty.
one thing about this kind of this kind of sketching is that sometimes it takes a while to actually finish it because I am constantly deciding what things I want to include and what things I、um, don't want to include. So it takes a bit of thinking、um, when you are drawing. It's not like、um, it's you're following the picture exactly. You're actually making a lot of little decisions when you're sketching. So for me, that takes time. For me, it's、um, quite slow at the moment.、Um, but I am really, really amazed that everyone wants to watch. Well, not everyone. Maybe a big. Portion of you guys wants to watch real time videos that are so long, and but、um, since you guys like watching these long videos, I might consider doing a live.、Um, a live would be at least an hour long if I were to do something like this, and. To be honest, doing a live video would be pretty a pretty big step for me.、Um, as a, I don't know, I I feel like it's a very it's very tough doing live videos. So I might attempt it in the future.、Um, do. Tell me if that would be interesting for you in, down in the comments below, or if you prefer shorter videos, do tell me down in the comments below as well. I love reading your comments, and I like reading your feedback.、Um, I will try to answer everybody's questions maybe in a future Q and A video. And maybe that would be more convenient for everyone, just to have、uh, a specific video for questions and answers, so that you don't have to search through all of my videos just to find your 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 answer. And yeah, so yeah, those are a few、um, video ideas for the future. And also, I will be doing. I will be trying to make a video about some of my sketches when I was in Europe. So that will be exciting. I hope it will turn out well. We don't know yet because,、um, well, I I didn't have a lot of time to sketch actually, and um. Well, I don't know if it's considered the sketches that I did were, you know, you know, good enough to be、um, made into YouTube videos. But we shall see. I I shall work on them, and we shall see. So currently, I am drawing the bench that is in the photo as well. It is in a different, sort of different position than the original. And I, at this point, I am a little bit overwhelmed. I know I was a little bit overwhelmed with the the amount of tables and chairs and legs that I would have to draw. So I decided that I would just draw this bench, and then I would draw the table, or two, and then、uh, that would be it. So the getting those、um, tables and chairs in is actually a little bit tough for me. Maybe it is for you as well, or maybe you're really, you know, used to it. Everybody is different, right? So for me, I'm not.、Uh, it's not very interesting for me. Um, it's not like really, really easy for me、uh, so far. I will practice. I, I, I will. But, <laughs> but so far, it is、um, one of the most toughest subjects、um, for me、um, when I'm doing these sketches. 
So、um, basically, you're seeing me just having fun in this sketch. I am not really, really challenging myself. This is not a a challenge. This is just a loose sketch where I'm just having fun. So yeah, I'm taking a lot of liberties with this one. <laughs> So at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include the two windows at the top, so I did not paint or sketch them until now. And now we're at the midway point, and I can see that, yeah, we do need those windows with those windows there, because there is a lot of empty space there, and it also gives you a sense of what the building is like. And how the cafe is positioned at the ground floor of this building. Now I'm just doing some of those finishing touches. I'm adding some of those lines to indicate texture on the building. It、um, kind of looks like bricks, and just adding a few lines here and there. Finally, we have come to the second part of the painting process, and we're going to paint in the second layer with the same colors that we mixed in the first layer. So now I'm painting the lines on the awning first with that red color that we mixed initially, and、um, if the first paint that you mixed, if the first mixes have finished, then you need to keep mixing new fresh paint as you paint. So the first stroke, the first few strokes are. Definitely the most intense 
because you have more paint on your brush and then as you progress you get less and less paint so I like to paint from um, left to right because um, especially since now it's um, the light is supposed to be coming from the right side so as I paint naturally there is less and less paint so the colors become less intense towards um, the right side so that is perfect for um, giving this um, feeling of oh the right side is brighter than the left side So painting the signboard is one of the most tricky parts. Um, trying to paint words is quite a difficult task with watercolor. Um, one because, well, it uh, it is quite hard to paint around alphabets and. It is quite hard also to just manage that space in between the alphabets. So um, the way that I do it is I estimate where the center is and then I try to um, get one side uh, as accurate as possible and then I get then I do the other side. So you have to kind of plan ahead with these um, signboards. Um, it's kind of hard to describe how to do this. I actually don't do a very neat job of it, especially when I do these loose sketches. I just just I just wing it. And sometimes I'm very honest. Sometimes if it does not work out like this one right here is quite blurry and I wasn't sure if I really actually liked it but I left it and and just started working on the bushes I did not try to paint another line at the bottom so I left um, that signboard kind of halfway done sometimes it's uh, it's okay to just leave it without words um, so yeah uh, sometimes it's okay to have it kind of blurry um, you don't want it to be too clear and too distracting as well at least that's what I prefer however if I cannot accept that signboard if I wanted to change it I it's actually quite easy to rub it out with a clean um, wet brush and I can just redo that whole thing again so now I'm doing the bushes and you can see I'm doing two layers at once um, I'm doing the mid-tone green as well as the darker green and the darker green is actually um, a mixture of the green that we mixed before and some more ultramarine deep 
and I also added a bit of that yellowish green that is、um, a little bit of yellow ochre. Now I'm introducing a very strong color to the flower pot at the bottom, and it is、uh, mainly burnt sienna. I think I did mix a little bit of yellow ochre in as well, and that makes this pot really stand out. So I am also going to introduce the same color to the areas at the top, like in the awnings. And on the signboard, so I'm introducing this、uh, color to other parts of the painting, so that we get a more balanced painting. Now we are getting to another tricky part, and this window here is a very big window. It has a lot of complicated reflections in it, and but it is quite important. So we do need to have some of those details in it. And one of those details is this little sign board, or I don't know what it is. It's a, a lamp. A light, but it does have the、um, the cafe's name on it. So I guess it's a sign, and、uh, I'm painting that first. I painted that first with some burnt sienna, and then now I'm painting around that sign with a dark blue gray, which is a mix、um, of ultramarine and burnt sienna. And at the same time, I'm trying to give an impression that there are reflections in this window, as you can see、um, right here. And in the photo, you can really see、um, a lot of reflections of other windows, other doors, and the bushes and the awning. It is also reflected in this very big window. So one of the things about painting loosely like this is that most of the time, I don't really have a plan. So things do get quite messy at times, and maybe you you don't notice it, but actually, it really sometimes I really face、um, tough spots. Like I I I, I felt that this. Window was really challenging because I just went in without a plan. So, but the thing is, I、um, I tried my best 
and then I felt like, yes, it is quite messed up. It feels very, very weird, and I'm not sure when I I'm not sure how to approach something. I just let it rest. I don't actually give up. I don't just okay this painting. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I just I just let it rest. So I actually stopped halfway when I、um, was painting that window. It's not it's not completely done. Just like the signboard, it is kind of halfway done, and I just let it rest for a bit. And the good thing is during that time, that layer of watercolor. Will dry first, and you will be able to paint over it instead of fidd- instead of、um, fiddling with that one layer like forever. So, how I deal with、um, those moments where I get kind of、um, I get kind of、um, demotivated is, and I I feel like I want to give up. Is that I I let it rest I I and I'm quite used to ignoring that feeling of wanting to give up now. So when I face challenges, when you know when I paint,、uh, I take I take a step back. I work on something else first, so that I don't fixate too much on that thing that I find challenging, and then. When I get back to it, I feel like I am more ready. I feel less emotional, and somehow my subconscious mind has been working working on it a little bit, and、uh, I feel better. And that emotion, that emotion of wanting to give up, has、um, kind of run its run its course already. So. Yeah, it's you are in a better headspace when you come back, and yeah, you can see here that it's much easier to、um, do the reflections once that first layer of painting,、uh, that first layer of watercolor has dried as well. So yeah. Maybe it's a bad practice. Maybe some people would say,、um, "Why don't you go in with a plan, or why don't you plan out your paintings first?" Well, actually, I do plan out my paintings. I actually do plan them out. Like I think a lot. I I actually look at the reference and th- just think, like every single step. That I should take, like what I should paint, what color I should paint first, what portion should be painted first, and that is、um, something that comes with painting with watercolor because you really do need to plan ahead、um, when you're doing、uh, like even like very complicated stuff. But for this, for this kind of loose sketching, for this. It is like a practice for me. It's like a an exercise, and when you have to plan too much, when you have to think, when I have to think too much, and、um, when I take too much time trying to get ready to sketch and paint, I oftentimes don't even start. Like it freaks me out sometimes because. Maybe some of you might not understand that, but me as a person, when I think about something too much, and I I think about all the scenarios, and I it sometimes just demotivates me, and I just never start. So, the way to get myself started and and just go in and just practice and and paint as much as possible is, I just go. I just I just start, and it not it, of course it's、um, different for everyone. But if you want, you can always plan ahead, and that is I think it's a personal preference. Everybody is different, and the way that I paint and sketch 
and it's like this, but it's not like this all the time. So yeah, I just wanted to say that I do plan <laughs> some of my paintings and some of my sketches. Like right here, I am actually、um, chickening out. I don't want to go straight in with the words on that big signboard. So I'm actually、uh, using a pencil to mark. The beginnings of each letter that I'm going to paint with watercolor, so that helps me to keep the letters in the right size and to have correct spacings between those letters. In fact, if I think something is tough and I haven't painted something like this before, or I haven't used these color combinations before, I will try to do a small draft, or some people call them thumbnail sketches. But I don't really do small, tiny ones. I I just do them like like this, and before that is before I do the real one. The real painting. So you, once you have painted it and sketched it once, you start to understand how things work, what colors work together well, what technique you should use, and which color you need to start first. So, like for this window, I know that I must start. With that light, because、um, lighter colors in watercolor they get buried when you、um, when you apply darker colors around it. So you have to preserve that light paint, and don't try to paint lighter on top of darker paint, because that does not most of the time does. That does not work unless you're using gouache. Then, yeah, you can do that. So I actually added a wash of gray to that big signboard, and after I did that, I actually didn't really like it. So after I did that, I was like, "Oh, this does not really look very nice." So I actually adjusted that sign. I will be adjusting that signboard later, and I will be like trying to. <laughs> Make it less gray, and trying to make those words stand out a little bit more.
Now I'm adding some of those darker shadows with the same blue-gray mix and remember to add shadows more towards the left side because light is coming from the right side. Now I am just adding some minor touches. I'm adding more red to certain areas so that that red kind of pops out a little bit more. At this point, I was undecided as to whether I should keep adding things or shadows and highlights, so I stopped. And that is one of the things, one of the feelings that you get when um, it is almost done. So if you go a step further than that, you do risk overworking your paintings, which Actually, it is quite a subjective thing and you need to kind of listen to yourself and um, stop when you feel like um, maybe it's enough.
But as I mentioned before, I wasn't happy with that signboard. So I came back in later that day and I used a clean brush to rub out that signboard a little bit. And I made the letters more prominent and the right side of that signboard became um, a little bit less gray and it felt like it worked better because it feel if before this it felt like that signboard was a bit weird and I think it's because it was too flat like the right side the right top side should have been brighter So while I am waiting for that signboard area to dry off before I proceed to adjust it even more, I am actually adding in even more shadows now to define some of these areas more. So overall for this piece, I really did not expect it to be as challenging as it was. It, at first glance, it looks like a very simple subject, 
but maybe I'm not used to a lot of these elements, like a lot of words and、um, a lot of those the window reflections that I rarely do、um, in detail. And、um, I actually found this quite challenging. So, but I, I'm glad that in the end I managed to finish it. And for me, what's important, what's the most important, is that I finish all the sketches that I do,、um, no matter how long it takes. And if I leave something like、um, halfway, And I don't finish it. I always feel worse. Like I always feel worse if something goes unfinished, and I never, I never ever finish it. And so the good thing is I got something out of this. I learned something, and I am glad that I just finished it, even though it may be less than perfect. So, yeah. And finally, I decided that I would paint in those letters. I actually decided not to, and then I, I came back, and then I I was like, yeah, I I think I am ready to attempt that. And I think these that this um words these words at the bottom were much better than the words at the top.、Um, I don't know if it was a、uh, Because those letters are bigger and easier to paint, probably, yeah. But I was in a better headspace and I was more ready to paint those letters, and yeah. So I think they came out better than the top. All right. So, if you found this video helpful to you, as always, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me that all of you here、um, say such kind words and、um, are so supportive. I am really, really grateful for everyone here. You guys are my YouTube family, and. I hope to.、Uh, I hope we can continue to inspire each other. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.